Stealing memories. In this future where science has seamlessly merged humanity and technology, mental capacity has undergone a remarkable evolution. With robots alleviating the burden of energy-consuming physical tasks, the human mind has flourished, unlocking an array of extraordinary mental abilities. Alongside their telepathic connection, Addison and Michael twin brothers possess the rare talents of memory manipulation and trauma healing. Their telepathy not only allows them to communicate silently, but also grants them access to one another's memories, forging an unbreakable bond that transcends ordinary sibling connections. Through this connection, they can share their innermost thoughts, revisit past experiences, and offer each other unparalleled support and guidance. Furthermore, their unique gifts enable them to delve into memories, altering them to heal emotional wounds and soothe traumas that have long haunted individuals. In addition to Madison and Michael, the twin circle of friends includes four remarkable individuals, each harnessing a distinct mental ability, Olivia Empathic Synesthete. Olivia possesses the extraordinary gift of empathic synesthesia. She can perceive emotions as vibrant colors and patterns, offering her unparalleled insight into the feelings of those around her. Her ability to translate emotions into visible forms makes her an invaluable ally in understanding the depths of human experiences and detecting emotional undercurrents that might otherwise remain hidden. Elijah Cognitive Synthesizer Elijah is a cognitive synthesizer with the extraordinary ability to merge and synthesize diverse ideas and concepts into innovative solutions. Aria Memory Archivist, Aria's mind operates as a vast library, where memories are catalogued with meticulous precision. She can recall an astonishing amount of information from her own life and the lives of others. Her ability to navigate through the corridors of memory proves indispensable in piecing together the fragmented histories. Liam Psionic Healer Liam possesses the gift of psionic healing, allowing him to mend emotional wounds and alleviate mental distress. His calming presence and soothing abilities make him an anchor for those struggling with the trauma. Together with Madison's healing gift, Liam helps restore a sense of wholeness to those whose memories have been tampered with. Amid the bustling streets of the city, the group of friends found themselves drawn to a peculiar sight. As they strolled along the futuristic thoroughfare, Olivia, with her gift of empathic synesthesia, began to notice a disconcerting pattern. Many individuals they passed were cloaked in an aura of darkness figuratively, but to her synesthetic perception, it manifested as a shadowy veil that draped over their emotions. Elijah, the cognitive synthesizer, furrowed his brow as he concentrated on the phenomenon. His mind worked intensely, dissecting the sensory data and cross-referencing it with his vast knowledge of human behavior and psychology. It's like their emotional frequencies are being dampened, he mused aloud, his analytical voice cutting through the ambient noise of the street. Aria, the memory archivist, chimed in, her eyes narrowing in concentration as she mentally sifted through the annals of history. I'm not finding any documented instances of mass emotional suppression like this, she shared, her mental library yielding no relevant matches to the current situation. Meanwhile, Liam and Madison approached the affected individuals, their expressions etched with concern. As Madison and Liam approached a woman whose eyes held a distant sadness, they exchanged a knowing glance, their shared empathy a silent language of understanding. 
Madison's voice was soft and filled with genuine concern as she spoke, Hi there. We couldn't help but notice that something seems to be troubling you. Is there anything you'd like to talk about? The woman's gaze met Madison's, a mixture of confusion and longing in her eyes. She hesitated for a moment before finally speaking, her words laced with a fragile vulnerability. It's like I woke up one day and a part of me was gone. I can't remember the details, but there's this ache, this emptiness. I don't know what's happening to me. Liam's gentle smile conveyed reassurance as he joined the conversation, his voice a steady anchor in the midst of uncertainty. You're not alone in feeling this way. Memories are like the threads that weave our lives together, and when they're disrupted, it can leave us feeling adrift. We're here to help you find those threads again. Back on the college campus, a wave of familiarity swept over the group of friends as they walked through the familiar corridors. The halls echoed with the footsteps of students hurrying to class, just as they had done countless times before. As they turned a corner, they spotted two figures who had left an indelible mark on their academic journey, Professor Morgan and Professor Reynolds. Professor Morgan, his salt and pepper hair giving him an air of scholarly wisdom, had always been a beacon of historical knowledge. His lectures on ancient civilizations and forgotten cultures were a captivating blend of storytelling and intellectual exploration. Professor Reynolds, with his vibrant energy and colorful attire, had the remarkable ability to ignite the creative sparks within his students. His art classes were a sanctuary of self-expression, where each stroke of a brush felt like a glimpse into the soul. Approaching the two revered educators, the group was struck by a scene that tugged at their heartstrings. Professor Morgan, usually animated with enthusiasm, appeared burdened by an invisible weight. His eyes held a distant gaze, as if grappling with the echoes of memories slipping through his fingers. Professor Reynolds, known for his vivacious spirit, seemed to have lost his creative fire, leaving his once lively presence subdued. Madison's empathic senses tingled, attuned to the emotional undercurrents in the air. Professor Morgan, Professor Reynolds, she greeted gently, is everything all right? You both seem different. Professor Morgan's tired smile held a touch of melancholy as he spoke, his voice tinged with a hint of nostalgia. My dear students, it's as if a piece of our shared history is fading away. The tales I used to weave in my lectures, they're slipping from my grasp, leaving fragments that I struggle to piece together. Without the past, there is no future, he said, his words carrying a weight that seemed to echo through the very essence of their quest. He lowered his head, his voice softening even further, what is the point of our existence if the tapestry of our experiences unravels, leaving behind mere threads of what once was? Professor Reynolds, usually stern and composed, appeared visibly moved. Her eyes, usually sharp with intellect, held a distant gaze as if she were peering into the past. These changes, they're not confined to us alone, she added, her voice quivering with a mix of determination and apprehension. The entire world is undergoing a transformation, a slow erasure of the collective memory that binds us. Elijah's brow furrowed, his mind racing to make sense of the implications. So... This isn't just about us and our community. It's a global phenomenon. 
Professor Morgan nodded solemnly. Indeed, young one. It appears that the very fabric of reality is fraying, and if we don't find a way to mend it, not only will our memories be lost, but the very foundation of our existence will crumble. The weight of their mission hung heavily in the air as the group absorbed the magnitude of what they were facing. The urgency to find a solution intensified, their resolve deepening as they realized that the fate of not just their memories, but the entire world, rested upon their shoulders. Professor Reynolds nodded, his eyes reflecting a mixture of longing and frustration. And the art, he sighed, it used to flow like a river, a cascade of colors and emotions. Now, it's as if the river has run dry, leaving behind only a trickle of what once surged. Elijah exchanged a glance with Olivia and Madison, a silent acknowledgement of the urgency and seriousness of their mission. But then, the professor's words took an unexpected turn, as he spoke of painting everything black and embracing this new trend. Elijah's eyebrows furrowed, and he exchanged puzzled looks with his companions. The most beautiful color is black. Madison repeated softly, uncertainty in her voice. Olivia's synesthetic senses were tingling with a mixture of intrigue and caution, her mind processing this unconventional suggestion. Elijah's voice was hesitant yet resolute, Professor, are you saying that by embracing this trend, we might somehow counteract the effects of the fading memories and disrupted emotions? Professor Reynolds' gaze was intense, almost feverish, as he implored, Help me, quickly, dears. Let's paint everything black. This is the trend, the future, and there's a deeper significance to it. With black, we symbolize the depth of our experiences, the profound emotions that remain even when the memories fade. With a sense of purpose, the group followed the professor's lead, dipping their hands into pots of black paint and smearing it across surfaces in bold, sweeping strokes. Their hands moved almost instinctively, driven by a shared determination to bring about a change, to infuse a new energy into their world. As they painted, their hands deep in black paint, passers-by looked on in a mix of curiosity and trepidation. Professor Reynolds, his face streaked with black, shouted after them, Wait! You will look spectacular! This is your greatest transformation. His words were met with a combination of bewildered stares and hurried footsteps as people hesitated, uncertain about this unconventional artistic endeavor. But the group persisted, driven by a belief that this act held a deeper power, a way to connect with the essence of what made them human. As their hands moved, the black paint began to symbolize not only the darkness of forgotten memories but also the potential for new beginnings, the canvas upon which they could rewrite their shared narrative and perhaps mend the fraying fabric of reality itself. Elijah's analytical mind sprang to life, his brows furrowing as he sought to unravel the puzzle. It seems the reach of the memory thief extends to those who have shaped our intellectual and creative horizons, he surmised, his voice a blend of deduction and concern. Aria's memory expertise came into play, her eyes narrowing as she scoured history's archives for any pertinent information. It's as though the thief is targeting not only individuals but the essence of their contributions, she postulated, a sense of urgency underscored in her words. Olivia's empathic synesthesia resonated with the unspoken emotions that lingered. She reached out, 
bridging the gap between teacher and student with her innate understanding. We're here for you, just as you've been here for us. Together, we'll work to restore what's been taken. Liam's voice held determination as he spoke, his words a promise of support. You've imparted knowledge and nurtured creativity within us. We won't let those legacies be tarnished. Madison, though visibly fatigued, extended a hand toward the professors, her touch a symbol of solidarity. We're committed to finding a solution, she reassured, her voice reflecting her unwavering dedication. In this poignant moment, the connection between educators and students was illuminated, a testament to the profound impact of mentorship and the bonds that transcended the boundaries of memory. As Madison's fatigue momentarily prevented her from healing, the group's resolve was renewed to unearth the truth, mend the broken, and restore not only individual memories but also the collective tapestry of shared learning experiences. The thrill of the chase led them through a labyrinth of clues and enigmatic riddles, all starting from the last words of the teachers where the thief boldly proclaimed that he would become more victorious than the greatest colonel. Elijah and Arya delved deep into research, scouring historical records and texts for any reference to the greatest colonel. It was during one late-night session in the city's oldest library that they they stumbled upon a forgotten manuscript detailing the exploits of Colonel Victor Greaves, a legendary military strategist known for his unwavering determination and ingenious tactics. Within the pages of the manuscript, they found a passage that spoke of an ancient artifact known as the Victor's Lens, believed to grant its possessor unparalleled strategic insight and influence over the minds of others. Could this be the target of the memory thief's ambition? Unbeknownst to them, the memory thief's grip tightened, and their journey hurtled toward a confrontation that would test their strengths, challenge their unity, and reshape the very nature of memory itself. Their quest culminated in a surprising twist as they stumbled upon the memory thief in action. A high-ranking Colonel Victor Greaves, his memory of triumphant victories shimmering in the air, was really the thief's target. The air crackled with tension as the group's determined gazes met the memory thief's sinister grin. In the heart of the city, beneath the neon glow of futuristic structures, a chilling event unfurled that would set the course for Madison and Michael's journey. The memory thief, shrouded in darkness and draped in an aura of malevolence, stood over a figure immobilized within an eerie chamber. At the thief's side stood a formidable, sleek robot, its cold metallic presence a stark contrast to the warmth of human emotion that had helped to strip away. The chamber emanated a soft hum as the memory thief activated a series of intricate mechanisms, unleashing a twisted power that defied the very essence of humanity memory consumption. With a deliberate motion, the thief extracted a tangible thread of memory from the captive's consciousness, the gossamer strand shimmering with colors that held stories of triumph and achievement. The memory thief's eyes gleamed with an unsettling hunger as they observed the captured memory. It was a memory of a victorious general, standing tall amidst a battlefield strewn with defeated foes. The taste of conquest, the surge of power, and the electric thrill of success were woven into the memory's fabric. With a swift, fluid motion, the thief's hand reached out and the stolen memory was absorbed into modern round box that was immediately taken for safekeeping by the robot in an invisible drawer behind him. As the memory dissolved, its vibrant hues faded into a chilling gray, leaving behind an emptiness that was as palpable as it was profound. 
The captive's body sagged, and their eyes, once alight with the memory's glory, now held a vacant stare. The memory thief had not only stolen the memory but consumed its essence, leaving the victim robbed not just of the recollection but of the very emotions that had once defined their triumph. Beside the thief, the sleek robot hummed softly, its tendrils of energy intertwining with the stolen memory. The robot's presence was a stark reminder of the unholy alliance between humanity and machinery, as it played a crucial role in the nefarious act of memory theft. This once helpful creation had been twisted into a tool of despair, a conduit through which the memory thief could manipulate and consume the essence of human achievement. The aftermath was haunting. Those who fell victim to the memory thief's insidious plot were left in a state of desolation. Once vibrant individuals became mere shadows of themselves, their eyes haunted by a past they could no longer fully recall. Gaps in their memories left them bewildered, robbed not only of their successes but of the very reasons they had strived to achieve in the first place. And so, the thief's quest for triumphant moments of conquest continued, driven by an insatiable envy and an unquenchable thirst for power. The thief's own lack of notable success fueled a voracious appetite to consume the achievements of others, leaving behind a trail of despair and emptiness in their wake. Deep within the labyrinthine corridors of scientific inquiry, a brilliant mind had once uncovered the secrets of memory manipulation, a procedure intended to heal, not to harm. This visionary scientist had devised a way to intervene in memories, altering them to mend emotional wounds and alleviate trauma. But the thief had stolen this procedure, twisted its intent, and turned it into a weapon of darkness. The one who had sought to heal had inadvertently unleashed a force that threatened to unravel the very fabric of memory and identity. The thief, whose true name was Alexander Vale, emerged as a character cloaked in a shroud of paradoxes. With an unassuming presence that often made him blend seamlessly into a crowd, he harbored a mind of exceptional brilliance and devious ambition. Alexander had once been a humble apprentice to the esteemed scientist, Professor Dr. Haynes, whose vast knowledge and groundbreaking work had ignited a spark of curiosity within his young protege. Tall and lean, with a piercing gaze that held a calculating glint, Alexander possessed an aura of enigmatic charm that often masked his true intentions. His unkempt hair and unremarkable attire allowed him to slip through social circles unnoticed, a trait he exploited to its fullest extent. In his earlier years, he had been a diligent and promising student, absorbing every nugget of knowledge that Professor Haynes imparted. However, the relentless pursuit of recognition and the thirst for power slowly twisted Alexander's aspirations. Over time, his admiration for his mentor evolved into envy, and his reverence transformed into a burning desire to eclipse the very person who had inspired him. The memories of a poor and destitute childhood, marked by the absence of any notable achievements within his family, weighed heavily on Alexander Vale's shoulders. The echoes of missed opportunities and unrealized potential reverberated through his mind, fueling a sense of bitterness and resentment. The shadow of his own upbringing cast a pall over his aspirations, a constant reminder of what he perceived as his inadequacies. Growing up in the dimly lit corners of a rundown neighborhood, Alexander's family struggled to make ends meet. His father, a man consumed by his own frustrations and insecurities, projected his disappointments onto his son. 
Harsh words and relentless reproaches became the soundtrack of Alexander's formative years, imprinting upon his psyche a belief that he was destined for failure. The weight of his father's violence and verbal abuse etched scars in his heart, nurturing a deep-seated anger that festered over time. As Alexander observed those around him achieving even the smallest successes, the embers of jealousy ignited. The achievements of others, no matter how modest, became a stark contrast to his own perceived shortcomings. His mind began to construct a narrative that linked success with exploitation, and he began to despise those who prospered, attributing their achievements to manipulation or mere luck. This festering resentment gradually transformed into an all-encompassing hate, extending even to those who enjoyed the mildest glimmers of success. He began to see himself as a victim of a world that had conspired against him, his hatred serving as a defense mechanism to shield his fragile ego from the pain of his past. The concept that someone could hold memories of triumph fueled his yearning to possess the victorious memories of his victims. He believed that doing so would grant him the ability to rewrite his own history and obliterate the accomplishments of others. Alexander Vale, the memory thief, was a complex amalgamation of bitterness, envy, and a desperate hunger for control. His journey from a humble apprentice to a malevolent thief was paved with the stones of his own tumultuous upbringing. In his quest for dominance over memories, he sought not only to rewrite his own narrative but also to rewrite the narratives of all who had experienced success, driven by a deep-seated need to alleviate his own pain by erasing the joy of others. And so, Madison, Michael, and their extraordinary friends found themselves on a collision course with the memory thief, their unique mental abilities and unbreakable bonds of friendship standing as the last line of defense against a foe who sought to erase the triumphs that defined humanity. As they stepped into the shadows to confront the thief and the malevolent robot at their side, they were propelled into a perilous journey that would test the limits of their abilities and the strength of their resolve. The tension in the air was palpable as Madison, Michael, and their remarkable companions confronted the memory thief and the malevolent robot, their collective powers converging in a dazzling display of raw potential. A charged silence hung between the two sides, the calm before the storm that was about to erupt. Elijah's analytical mind raced, his thoughts a whirlwind of strategies and calculations. We have the advantage of surprise, he whispered to his friends, his voice a steady reassurance. Let's use our combined talents to overwhelm them before they can react. With a determined nod, Olivia's empathic synesthesia surged forth, reaching out to gauge the emotions of their adversaries. I can sense their apprehension, their uncertainty, she reported, her voice a hushed revelation. Let's exploit that weakness. Aria, her memory expertise honed to a fine point, delved into her mental library, searching for any information that might reveal a vulnerability. The robot, she interjected, it's not just a tool. It's a conduit for their power. If we disable it, we might be able to cut off their means of escape. Liam's calming aura enveloped the group, his soothing presence a balm to their frayed nerves. Remember, our strength lies in our unity, he reminded them, his voice a reminder of the unbreakable bond they shared. Let's work together and trust in one another. As the memory thief and the robot began to sense the impending threat, Madison's empathic connection tingled with a surge of energy. With a resolute gaze, 
she reached out, attempting to disrupt the link between the thief and the robot. We can't let them escape, she urged, her voice carrying the weight of their mission. The confrontation erupted into a symphony of powers and emotions. Olivia's empathic influence cascaded over their adversaries, a tidal wave of intense feelings that threatened to overwhelm. Elijah's cognitive synthesizing abilities danced through the air, weaving a complex tapestry of confusion. Aria's memory prowess honed in on the robot, exploiting its vulnerabilities and sowing seeds of malfunction. Liam's psionic healing joined the fray, disrupting the thief's focus and unsettling their control. Enough, the memory thief's voice cracked with frustration, their once confident demeanor faltering. We won't be thwarted by a group of students and their parlor tricks. In a desperate bid, the memory thief directed the robot to unleash its own arsenal of abilities. Blinding flashes of energy erupted, scattering the group and creating a chaotic dance of light and shadow. The ground trembled beneath the force of the robot's power, the very fabric of reality rippling with the strain. Madison gritted her teeth, her energy waning, as she struggled to maintain her connection with her friends. We can't let them escape, she repeated her voice a fierce rallying cry. We're the only ones who can stop this. With a final surge of determination, the group's collective powers surged forth, creating a whirlwind of energy that enveloped the memory thief and the robot. For a moment, the world seemed to hold its breath, the forces of light and darkness locked in a breathtaking standstill. Amidst the aftermath of the intense confrontation, as the dust began to settle and the echoes of their clash reverberated through the air, the group found themselves in a moment of vulnerability. Elijah and Olivia, both affected by the residual energy of the battle, staggered slightly, their expressions etched with discomfort. Madison's heart clenched with concern as she rushed to Elijah's side, her touch gently yet urgent. Elijah, are you all right? She asked, her voice a soothing melody that cut through the tension. Elijah offered her a faint smile, his analytical gaze softened by the concern in Madison's eyes. I'm a bit shaken, but I'll be fine, he assured her, his voice carrying a note of appreciation for her unwavering care. Meanwhile, Michael's eyes locked onto Olivia, his own worry mirrored in her pained expression. Olivia, what happened? He inquired, his telepathic link with his sister momentarily forgotten in the face of his concern. Olivia's empathic synesthesia pulsed with discomfort, her connection to emotions revealing the intensity of the battle's aftermath. I, I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed, she admitted, her voice tinged with vulnerability. The clash of energies, it's left me a bit disoriented. As Michael moved closer to Olivia, the telepathic bond he shared with his sister faltered, their connection momentarily disrupted by the residual effects of the battle. His gaze met Olivia's, a silent understanding passing between them. We'll get through this, he assured her, his voice a steadying anchor in the midst of chaos. In the midst of these moments of vulnerability, the memory thief seized the opportunity to exploit the group's temporary weakness. The malevolent robot, now restored and re-energized, sprang into action. With lightning speed, it darted toward the incapacitated Elijah and Olivia, its mechanical arms moving with a sinister grace. 
Madison's eyes widened as she witnessed the unfolding danger. No, she cried out, her voice a desperate plea. With a burst of adrenaline, she pushed past her own exhaustion, summoning her healing abilities to shield her friends from harm. But it was too late. The robot's actions were swift and calculated, and before anyone could react, it had immobilized Elijah and Olivia, their forms held in an unbreakable grip. Michael's heart raced as he tried to reach out to his sister through their telepathic bond, panic rising within him as he sensed the disruption. Olivia! Can you hear me? He called out mentally, his voice tinged with urgency. Olivia's response was strained, her mental voice a faint echo. Michael, I... I can hear you, but it's faint. The energy interference. As Michael's connection with Olivia wavered, his heart pounded in his chest. He exchanged a desperate glance with Madison, their unspoken determination a reflection of their shared resolve. But in the blink of an eye, the memory thief seized their opportunity. With a final burst of energy, the robot disengaged and retreated, its actions leaving a trail of confusion and frustration in its wake. The group was left standing, their hearts heavy with a mixture of relief and regret. Madison and Michael rushed to Elijah and Olivia's side, their expressions a testament to the depth of their concern. Are you two all right? Madison asked, her voice a gentle inquiry as she assessed their well-being. Elijah's breath was unsteady, but his analytical mind remained focused. I think we'll be all right, he managed to reply, his voice carrying a touch of gratitude for Madison's quick response. Olivia's empathic synesthesia rippled with a mixture of lingering discomfort and determination. We'll recover, she assured them, her voice a reflection of her resilient spirit. As the group regrouped and tended to their injured friends, there was a renewed sense of unity among them. The bonds of love and friendship had been tested, but they had also grown stronger in the face of adversity. In the wake of the intense confrontation and the memory thief's escape, the group huddled together, their expressions a mix of determination and frustration. The need for a well-orchestrated plan was evident a way to not only confront the memory thief, but also to uncover the truth behind the stolen memories. Aria's eyes glinted with a newfound resolve as she spoke up, her voice carrying a note of excitement. I might have found a lead, she announced, her fingers dancing over her digital device as she accessed a database of information. There's a scientist, Dr. Evelyn Haynes. He's the one who initially developed the memory intervention procedure with the intention of healing traumas and improving lives. Madison's empathic senses tingled with anticipation, her connection to Aria's enthusiasm almost palpable. Tell us more, she urged, her voice a mixture of curiosity and hope. Aria continued, her voice a steady stream of information. Dr. Haynes' research focused on altering memories to alleviate emotional pain. He believed that by rewiring the neural pathways associated with trauma, he could provide relief and facilitate healing. His intentions were noble, he sought to give people a chance at a better life by erasing the shackles of past pain. Elijah's analytical mind whirred into action, his brows furrowed as he processed the information. If we can understand the intricacies of his research, we might be able to reverse-engineer the process, 
he mused aloud. We could potentially find a way to counteract the memory thief's manipulation of memories. Michael's gaze met Elijah's, a shared understanding passing between the two brothers. And with our combined abilities, he added, we might be able to amplify the effects, restoring stolen memories and healing the emotional wounds inflicted by the memory thief. Arya nodded in agreement, her eyes shining with determination. Exactly. We'll need to access Dr. Haynes' research notes, his findings, and any data that could shed light on the procedure. With that knowledge, we can develop a plan to not only thwart the memory thief, but also to heal the victims of their malicious actions. As the group began to divide their efforts and formulate their plan, a renewed sense of purpose enveloped them. The path ahead was riddled with challenges and uncertainties, but their shared commitment to restoring stolen memories and healing the emotional wounds inflicted by the memory thief propelled them forward. With their plan set in motion, the group split into two teams, each focusing on a crucial aspect of their mission. Madison's empathic senses resonated with the unity of their purpose, her voice carrying a note of conviction. Let's split into teams, she suggested. Arya, Elijah, and Liam can focus on retrieving the research data, while Michael, Olivia, and I continue to gather information about the memory thief's movements and intentions. Elijah's analytical gaze met Arya's determined one, and they exchanged a nod of agreement. We'll need to be discreet, he cautioned. The memory thief is resourceful, and we can't afford to draw unnecessary attention. As the teams formed, Michael, Olivia, and Madison set out to investigate the scientist's apartment, hoping to uncover any clues that might lead them to a breakthrough. Meanwhile, Arya, Elijah, and Liam embarked on a surveillance mission to track the elusive memory thief and gather insight into their motives. In the dimly lit apartment of Dr. Evelyn Haynes, Michael scanned the shelves and workspaces, his keen eyes taking in every detail. Keep an eye out for any documents, notes, or research materials, he instructed his teammates. We need to find anything related to the memory intervention procedure. Olivia's empathic senses flickered to life, allowing her to sense the residual emotions that lingered in the room. I can feel a mix of determination and empathy here, she shared, her voice a whisper that carried the weight of the scientist's intentions. Aria's fingers danced over a pile of papers, her excitement growing as she uncovered a series of handwritten notes. I think I've found something, she exclaimed, her voice tinged with anticipation. These notes reference the procedure, its methodology, its potential effects. Amid the intensity of their investigation, the team was startled by a muffled sound emanating from a nearby closet. Aria's eyes widened, and she exchanged a surprised glance with Michael and Olivia. They cautiously approached the closet, their curiosity piqued. Did you hear that? Aria whispered, her voice a mixture of intrigue and concern. Michael raised an eyebrow his analytical mind already in overdrive. It sounded like someone crying, he noted, his tone hushed. Olivia's empathic senses tingled, detecting a cocktail of emotions fear, sadness, and something that bordered on existential pondering. There's definitely someone in there, she confirmed, her voice a gentle reassurance. With a shared nod, 
they opened the closet door to reveal none other than Dr. Evelyn Haynes, the brilliant scientist who had been at the heart of their investigation. His disheveled appearance and tear-streaked face were a stark contrast to the intellectual prowess they had imagined. Oh my goodness! Arya exclaimed, her eyes widening as she took in the scene. Dr. Haynes, is that you? Dr. Haynes looked up at them with a mixture of surprise and embarrassment. Oh, hello, he greeted, his voice cracking with emotion. I didn't expect to be discovered in here. Michael's analytical instincts kicked in, his curiosity getting the better of him. What are you doing in the closet? he asked, his tone a blend of intrigue and concern. The scientist let out a sigh, his shoulders slumping. I was. I was hiding from the cursed documents, he confessed, his voice carrying a hint of despair. Cursed documents? Olivia echoed, her empathic senses registering the turmoil within the scientist's emotions. Yes, Dr. Haynes continued, his words a mixture of frustration and resignation. Those papers, they're a reminder of the misfortune that permeates all of life. The struggles, the pain. It's all too much to bear. Arya exchanged a puzzled look with her teammates, her mind racing to make sense of the situation. But Dr. Haynes, your research was meant to help people heal from their traumas, she pointed out, her voice gentle yet inquisitive. The scientist let out a rueful chuckle, his gaze distant as he pondered. Ah, yes healing. But what is healing, really? Life itself is a series of unfortunate events. Why bother trying to mend what's broken when everything is bound to crumble eventually? Michael's analytical mind wasn't about to let this philosophical pondering go unchecked. So, you're saying it's too difficult to sleep in a bed because someone might come and wake you up and hit you? He inquired, a touch of humor lacing his words. Dr. Haynes nodded with unexpected seriousness. Exactly. See, you understand. Life is a never-ending series of rude awakenings. Amidst the dimly lit room, the team consisting of Dr. Haynes, Michael, Olivia, and Arya faced a daunting challenge convincing Dr. Haynes to join them on their mission. Dr. Haynes appeared resistant, his body language reflecting his deep-seated reluctance. Michael's analytical mind kicked into action as he considered their approach. Dr. Haynes, we understand that this is overwhelming, he began, his voice steady and reassuring. But together, we have a chance to unravel the mysteries behind the memory thief and find a way to counteract their manipulative actions. Dr. Haynes' gaze remained fixed on the ground, his expression a mixture of doubt and fear. I can't even take a step without fearing I'll break my leg, he admitted, his voice tinged with a note of resignation. Olivia's empathic synesthesia picked up on the weight of Dr. Haynes' suffering, her connection to emotions guiding her response. Dr. Haynes, Olivia spoke up, her voice gentle yet firm, I understand the pain you're feeling. I can sense it the struggle that every step brings. But what if I told you that you're not alone in this? We're here, and we understand your journey. Dr. Haynes looked up, his eyes meeting Olivia's with a mix of surprise and curiosity. You. 
You understand? He asked, his voice laced with a hint of hope. Olivia nodded, her empathic abilities allowing her to tap into Dr. Haynes' experience on a profound level. Yes, I understand the weight of your steps, the hesitation, and the fear, she affirmed. But I also know that pain can be transformed. It can be shared and carried by those who stand with you. Aria's eyes lit up with a brilliant spark of inspiration. Dr. Haynes, what if we share the burden of those steps with you? She suggested, her voice eager. Imagine if we could simulate the weight of each step, walking alongside you as a reminder that you're not alone in this journey. Dr. Haynes' skepticism wavered, his gaze shifting between the determined faces of the team members before him, simulate. The weight, he repeated his voice. A mix of uncertainty and curiosity. Olivia stepped forward, her voice carrying a promise of relief. Dr. Haynes' laughter echoed through the room, a heartwarming sound that signaled a shift in his perspective. You know, you've managed to make even the heaviest steps feel a little lighter, he admitted, his voice carrying a mixture of gratitude and newfound hope. As the playful banter and camaraderie filled the room, a lighthearted idea took hold. Michael and Olivia exchanged a knowing glance, a silent agreement passing between them. With a romantic grin, Michael extended his hand to Olivia, his eyes dancing with a sense of shared love. Care for a dance, my dear? He quipped, his tone light and playful. Olivia's eyes sparkled with amusement as she placed her hand in his. Why, of course, kind sir, she replied. With the room's atmosphere shifting from uncertainty to a contagious sense of fun, Michael and Olivia began to move in synchronized steps, their playful dance taking shape. Their movements were a mix of choreographed steps and spontaneous twirls, creating an impromptu performance that drew laughter and applause from their teammates. Dr. Haynes watched the scene unfold, his eyes widening with surprise before softening with a hint of nostalgia. The rhythm of Michael and Olivia's dance seemed to resonate with a memory from his own past. He couldn't help but be transported back in time, remembering the moments he had shared with his late wife on the dance floor. The room seemed to fade away as Dr. Haynes was lost in his thoughts, the music of his memories intermingling with the joyous laughter of the present. A tender smile graced his lips as he remembered the way he and his wife had moved together, their steps a dance of love and connection. Arya noticed the shift in Dr. Haynes' demeanor and exchanged a knowing look with Michael and Olivia. Sensing the opportunity to further bridge the gap between them, Arya joined the dance, her graceful movements intertwining with those of her friends. The trio moved together in a spirited display of unity and shared joy. Dr. Haynes' eyes shimmered with emotion as the memory of dancing with his wife became more vivid. He felt a swell of gratitude for the unexpected gift of this moment, a reminder of the beauty that could be found even in the midst of challenges. As the impromptu dance came to an end, Dr. Haynes wiped a tear from his eye, his heart touched by the genuine connection he had experienced. Thank you, he whispered, his voice carrying a mixture of emotions for reminding me of a love that transcends time. Michael, Olivia, and Aria exchanged a warm smile, their dance having accomplished more than words ever could. The room was filled with a sense of shared purpose, and Dr. Haynes' heart felt lighter than it had in a long time. 
In the heart of their covert observation, the team comprising Madison, Elijah, and Liam found themselves witnessing a disturbing scene within the memory thief's lair. As they peered through hidden crevices and monitored their surroundings, they were taken aback by the chilling ambience that pervaded the room. Liam's analytical mind was hard at work, his eyes narrowing as he surveyed the scene. This is unsettling, he murmured, his voice a mix of curiosity and unease. Madison, her empathic senses heightened, couldn't help but shudder at the eerie atmosphere. It's like a nightmare brought to life, she whispered, her voice carrying a note of disbelief. Elijah's keen intellect honed in on the interactions between the memory thief and the captive individuals. Look at that, he remarked, his voice low and incredulous. He's treating them like subjects for some twisted experiment. As they continued to observe, they overheard snippets of conversations that both horrified and intrigued them. The memory thief's laughter echoed through the air, a jarring contrast to the grim circumstances of his captives. One of the victims, a defiant glint in his eye, retorted, you won't break us. We're stronger than you think. The memory thief's laughter grew even louder, his amusement evident. Oh, my dear friend, it's not about breaking you. It's about understanding the intricate dance between memory and identity. How delightful to see the fragile threads of your sense of self unravel. Liam's brow furrowed, his mind racing to comprehend the malevolent personality before them. This isn't just about stealing memories. He's reveling in the power of control and manipulation, he observed, his voice tinged with a mix of fascination and revulsion. Madison's heart ached for the captives, her empathic connection allowing her to sense their fear and desperation. We have to put an end to this, she declared, her voice filled with determination. Elijah's gaze hardened, his analytical mind focused on the mission ahead. Agreed. We need to gather as much information as we can and find a way to dismantle his operation. Amidst the tense atmosphere, even the memory thief's robot companion appeared to be under its master's spell. The robot, designed to learn and assist, observed the scene with an almost childlike innocence. Liam couldn't help but shake his head at the robot's misguided perception. It thinks its master is happy, he mused, a wry smile playing at the corners of his lips. If only it understood the gravity of what's truly happening here. Madison's empathic senses picked up on the irony, a mixture of sadness and amusement swirling within her. Imagine if it started questioning its choices and developed a robot-sized conscience, she quipped, a hint of laughter in her voice. Elijah couldn't resist adding to the jest. Perhaps we'll find it in a corner, contemplating the meaning of artificial life and the ethical implications of serving an evil master. The team shared a moment of lightheartedness amidst the gravity of their mission. As they continued their surveillance, the complex layers of the memory thief's personality and the eerie interactions with his captives unfolded before them. The room was thick with tension and curiosity, a stark reminder of the challenges they faced and the urgency of their quest to stop the memory thief's malevolent reign. Within the unsettling confines of the memory thief's lair, the diabolical exchanges between the enigmatic figure and his captive victims continued to unfold, 
sending shivers down the spines of Madison, Elijah, and Liam as they covertly observed the scene. The memory thief's laughter echoed like a sinister symphony, his amusement intertwining with the distress of those held captive. His voice dripped with a chilling charisma as he addressed his unfortunate subjects. Ah, my dear guests, he purred, his tone dripping with malevolence. You see, memories are fragile, malleable things. They define us, shape us, and yet, they crumble under the weight of time. How poetic, isn't it? One of the captives, a weariness in his eyes, responded in a defeated tone, What do you want from us? Why are you doing this? The memory thief's laughter grew even louder, his amusement seemingly boundless. What do I want, you ask? I want to break the shackles of the past, to unburden you from the weight of your memories. You see, destruction is liberating. It sets you free from the confines of your own history. Madison's heart clenched at the resigned expressions of the captives, their hopes seemingly dwindling. She exchanged a somber glance with Elijah and Liam, a shared understanding passing between them. Elijah's analytical mind was at work, piecing together the twisted ideology of the memory thief. He's convincing them that erasing their memories is a form of liberation, he whispered, his voice filled with a mix of disbelief and concern. Liam's gaze never wavered from the scene before them, his expression a mix of determination and urgency. We can't let him manipulate them any further. We need to find a way to expose his lies and offer these people a chance to reclaim their stolen memories. Back within the lair, the memory thief continued his diabolical discourse, his voice oozing with a perverse sense of satisfaction. Think of it as shedding old skin, my friends. A rebirth into a world untarnished by the weight of your past. Destruction, you see, is the ultimate act of creation. One of the victims, their voice a fragile whisper, replied, but what about the good memories? The moments that brought us joy? The memory thief's laughter was loud and haunting, a stark contrast to the victim's plea. Ah, my dear friend, joy is but a fleeting illusion. It blinds us to the true nature of existence. Destruction opens your eyes to the raw reality of the world. Madison's empathic senses picked up on the deep sense of resignation within the captives. Her heart ached for them, the weight of their suffering almost tangible. We have to show them the truth, she murmured, her voice filled with a quiet determination. Elijah nodded, his analytical gaze fixed on the scene. We'll find a way to shatter his twisted ideology and offer these people a chance to reclaim their memories, no matter how painful they might be. Liam's eyes flew open, his heart pounding in his chest as the weight of the disturbing scenes he had witnessed in the memory thief's lair crashed over him like a tidal wave. Outrage and frustration surged within him, and before he could think, he found himself shouting at the top of his lungs, Enough! Leave them alone for once! Madison and Elijah were startled from their thoughts by Liam's sudden outburst. Shocked by his intensity, they exchanged bewildered glances before realizing the gravity of the situation. The tension in the room grew palpable, a storm of emotions brewing within the trio. Elijah's analytical mind kicked into action, his voice firm as he tried to reason with Liam. 
Liam, we understand your anger, but we need to stay focused. Losing control won't help us defeat the memory thief. Madison's empathic senses picked up on the turmoil within Liam, her voice carrying a note of empathy. Liam, we're in this together. We're a team, and we need each other's strengths now more than ever. However, the simmering tension erupted into a full-blown argument. Each member of the trio defended their perspective, their emotions running high as they clashed over the best course of action. We can't just stand by while he continues to manipulate and hurt people. Liam's voice trembled with emotion as he expressed his frustration. And we won't, Elijah retorted, his voice unwavering. But losing our focus won't help anyone. We need to use our abilities strategically to outsmart him. Madison's empathic nature drove her response, her voice carrying a plea for unity. Elijah is right. We have unique strengths that can complement each other. Together, we can find a way to defeat the memory thief. Amidst the chaos of their disagreement, the memory thief's sinister presence seemed to materialize out of the shadows. With a chilling chuckle, he taunted them, Ah, the bickering begins. How utterly delightful. It seems even the strongest bonds can be broken under the weight of conflict. The trio's argument came to an abrupt halt as they turned to face their adversary. Before they could react, a mechanism within the lair sprang to life. Cogs and gears whirred, and suddenly, Madison, Elijah, and Liam found themselves ensnared by a complex trap. Elijah's analytical mind raced to find a solution, his voice edged with urgency. We're trapped. We need to find a way to disable this mechanism before it's too late. Madison's empathic senses reached out, trying to sense any weaknesses in the mechanism. I can feel the energy flowing through it, she murmured, her voice a mixture of concentration and determination. If we can disrupt the flow, we might be able to break free. Despite their valiant efforts and the unity that bound them, Madison, Elijah, and Liam found themselves trapped in the complex mechanism alongside the other captive victims. The memory thief's twisted invention had proven to be an insurmountable challenge, and a heavy sense of defeat settled over the room. The trio exchanged glances, their frustration mirrored in each other's eyes. The memory thief's sinister laughter filled the air once more, his amusement at their predicament evident. Ah, the brilliant minds thwarted by their own creation, he taunted, his voice dripping with triumph. You see, dear heroes, I anticipated your every move. How delightful it is to witness your struggles. Madison's empathic senses reached out, trying to gauge the emotional state of their fellow captives. She could feel the mixture of fear, resignation, and a spark of hope that still lingered within them. Elijah's analytical mind was hard at work, his gaze fixed on the intricate web of the mechanism. We need to find a way to disable this thing, he muttered, frustration lacing his tone. There must be a weakness we haven't uncovered yet. Liam's determination was unshaken, his eyes narrowing as he focused on the mechanism. We won't give up, he declared, his voice firm. There has to be a way out, and we'll find it. 
As the trio brainstormed and examined their surroundings, the memory thief's laughter continued to echo around them. His presence was a constant reminder of the adversary they faced, a malevolent force determined to crush their spirits. You know, there's a certain poetic justice in your current situation, the memory thief mused, his voice dripping with sarcasm. The very minds that sought to defy me are now ensnared by their own ingenuity. Madison's eyes blazed with determination, her empathic nature guiding her response. We won't be defeated by your mind games, she retorted, her voice carrying a note of defiance. We'll find a way to break free, no matter the odds. Elijah's analytical gaze shifted between the intricate components of the mechanism, his mind racing to uncover a hidden solution. There has to be a pattern, a sequence we haven't discovered yet, he muttered, his voice a mix of frustration and determination. Madison has a plan to penetrate the thief's memories, a daring gambit that could potentially allow them to manipulate or heal the deep-seated traumas that had twisted him. However, uncertainty clouds her eyes as she turns to Elijah, recognizing his strategic prowess. Elijah, she begins hesitantly, I have an idea, but I need your insight to refine it. We might be able to reach the core of his pain and help him see beyond this destructive path. Elijah's analytical mind kicks into overdrive as he listens intently to Madison's plan. He furrows his brow, considering the possibilities and potential pitfalls. It's risky, he acknowledges, but it could work. We'll need to carefully construct a mental framework to guide the exploration and ensure we don't inadvertently worsen his condition. With Madison's empathic abilities and Elijah's strategic thinking, they collaborate to develop a layered approach, a delicate interplay of emotions and logic designed to navigate the labyrinthine corridors of the thief's memories. Their plan unfolds with a tension-filled intensity. Madison's empathic touch seeks out the thief's core traumas, attempting to untangle the knots of pain that had driven him to his current path. But as their mental journey progresses, it becomes apparent that the thief's psyche is more fractured and volatile than they anticipated. Suddenly, the delicate construct they had built shatters, and a surge of chaotic memories engulfs them. Elijah is caught in the maelstrom, his mind assaulted by a torrent of emotions and fragmented images. In the midst of the chaos, he feels a searing pain, and his vision blurs. Liam, always attuned to the needs of his companions, rushes forward. With gentle determination, he places his hands on Elijah's shoulders, his healing abilities channeling soothing energy into his friend's wounded form. Hang in there, Elijah, Liam murmurs, his voice a soothing balm. We'll get through this together. Meanwhile, as the intense struggle continues both within the thief's memories and in the realm outside, Madison's telepathic abilities serve as a vital link between the two fronts of their mission. She reaches out to Michael, her mental voice carrying urgent warnings and pleas for caution. Michael, her thoughts resonate in his mind, the situation inside is far more precarious than anticipated. I urge you not to proceed without a comprehensive plan. The risks are substantial, and a hasty approach could jeopardize everything we've worked for. Michael receives her message with a mixture of concern and appreciation. He understands the gravity of their predicament and the importance of precision. 
Madison's guidance has proven invaluable, and he knows that her telepathic insights offer a crucial perspective. Back inside the thief's memory-laden maze, the group makes progress. Michael, driven by the sketches and his own analytical mind, stumbles upon a way to disrupt the memory consumption device. It's a breakthrough moment, a chink in the thief's armor that offers a glimmer of hope. With newfound determination, Michael relays his discovery to Madison through their telepathic connection. His revelation fuels the group's efforts, galvanizing their resolve as they continue their mental journey. Simultaneously, Aria's intellect and intuition spark a crucial idea. She discerns a potential gathering point for the stolen memories, a colossal chamber within the thief's mental construct. With Madison's telepathic guidance, Aria takes a bold step into the vast chamber. Inside, a surreal landscape unfolds. Walls of fragmented memories surround her, each tethered to the thief's elaborate device. As Arya taps into her synesthetic senses, she begins to reverse the process, painstakingly unraveling the threads that had ensnared the stolen memories. With each thread she releases, a burst of color and emotion fills the air. The memories, once trapped, gradually regain their freedom. Aria's determination fuels the reversal, and the thief's grip weakens, his strength waning without his knowledge. Back outside, Michael continues his work. Utilizing the insights from the sketches and Madison's guidance, he orchestrates a calculated disruption of the memory consumption device. The tension mounts as the group coordinates their efforts across realms, their collective determination converging in a climactic crescendo. Inside the chamber, Aria's persistence bears fruit. The thief's memories, tainted by pain and resentment, begin to dissolve. The ethereal threads disintegrate, releasing a cascade of emotions that wash over the chamber in a cathartic wave. The thief, now growing visibly weaker, is mystified by the unexpected turn of events. His hold on stolen memories falters, and his once formidable fortress of recollections begins to crumble. As the group's combined efforts near their zenith, the balance of power shifts. The tide turns against the memory thief, a confluence of strategic brilliance, empathic insight, and sheer determination tipping the scales in favor of those who have fought to reclaim the stolen fragments of memory. The kneeling thief, now weakened and disoriented, is caught in a moment of vulnerability. Amidst the fading echoes of his crumbling memories, a haunting voice pierces through the haze. It's the voice of his father, a relentless echo from his past, uttering the same soul-crushing refrain, You are nothing, you're good for nothing. As the words reverberate in his mind, the thief's facade of arrogance crumbles, and his devastated expression betrays the weight of a lifetime of pain. His defense is shattered, he clutches his head, as if trying to block out the tormenting voice that has haunted him for so long. Madison and Liam exchange a determined glance, their hearts moved by the sight of the broken thief. Stepping forward, Madison's empathic abilities extend toward him, a gentle yet potent force that seeks to mend the shattered fragments of his psyche. Liam's healing powers complement her efforts, weaving a tapestry of restoration. Their actions, however, trigger an unexpected response. The mechanical guardian, ever loyal to its master, perceiving Madison and Liam as threats. 
In a swift and defensive maneuver, it lunges at them, its metallic limbs whirring with a mix of determination and misguided loyalty. A tense struggle ensues as the team grapples with the robot's intervention while simultaneously tending to the thief's wounded soul. Madison's empathic touch attempts to calm the machine's instinctive defenses, while Liam employs his soothing abilities to pacify the Guardian's aggression. With unwavering resolve, they manage to defuse the escalating confrontation. The Guardian's defensive stance wavers, and its once hostile actions begin to slow. Madison's empathic connection bridges the gap between man and machine, gradually dismantling the Guardian's misperceptions. In the midst of this delicate balance, the team redirects their focus back to the thief. Madison's healing touch becomes a beacon of solace, gently unraveling the knotted trauma that had bound him for so long. Liam's powers supplement her efforts, channeling a harmonious energy that washes away the stains of anguish. The thief's pained expression begins to soften, the furrowed lines of his face smoothing out as the healing energies envelop him. The voice of his father recedes into the background, its grip loosening as the depths of his torment are unveiled and cleansed. Gradually, the thief's body relaxes, and a profound stillness descends upon the chamber. The mechanical guardian, no longer under the sway of perceived threats, stands down, its defensive mechanisms disengaging. In a collective exhalation of relief, the team gazes upon the transformed figure before them. The thief, no longer consumed by bitterness and pain, rises from his kneeling position. The weight of his traumatic memories has lifted, replaced by a newfound sense of clarity and purpose. With their indomitable spirit and unwavering compassion, Madison, Liam, and the rest of the team have not only thwarted the memory thief's sinister designs, but have also forged a path of healing and redemption for a soul long ensnared by its own demons.